Hey, Justin James, World Long Drive Champion here, justinjamesgolf.com. I'm going to show you five steps to getting back on track with the driver. It's a simple little routine that you can use that I go to all the time. Half the fun of the game is hitting the driver well. If we get nothing else right, I still want you to be able to hit the driver long, hit it straight, hit it high, hit it far. That's what we're going to do today. All right, so five steps. This is what I like to think about going from first to fifth gear. The first rule, very simple. Do not go too fast, too quickly. We progress slowly and realize that I have course materials on my website that go more in depth on all this information. Steep to shallow, load to launch, driver 101. I'm gonna hit on some of these topics today. More information is available on my website. Let's start with the end in mind. The objective is real simple, is to hit the golf ball on the way up, slightly from the inside, especially those of you who are steep and over the top, who hit it low with too much excess spin. We need to get you hitting slightly on the inside. Again, it's a very simplistic explanation, but I'm a simple guy, it helps me, and on the way up. So how might I do that, okay? The first thing I'm gonna do is we're starting first gear, for me, this is all my terminology. First gear is, is just the hands, all right, and I've got, a lot of this information from one of my instructors, Mike Malaska, he does a great job explaining this. The hands are often not talked about with golf, okay, but they are a key power source to power and consistency. So we want to train those. So what I'm going to do is just kind of take my normal setup. I'll take sort of a staggered stance. And the first thing we're going to do, guys, is just kind of hinge the club, get it pivoting, and try to strike the golf ball with some consistency. Now I have a line here on the simulator what you're gonna do is place an object about five, 10 yards between your golf ball and your target line. Your job is to start the golf ball just right of that and try to put some, I hesitate to say, hook or draw spin. What we're doing here is just hitting kind of a tennis or a ping pong sort of forehand shot. So just with the hands. Now this is much harder than it looks. Let's see if I can even do it. Okay, just like that. All right, now we're, that's literally, that's just chipping the driver, that's phase one. The beauty is this, that's accomplishing, or that I just did what I wanna do when I hit a full shot and swing as hard as I can. I'm hitting, I'm, I'm rehearsing, I'm over-exaggerating, hitting the golf ball on the inside and on the way up. I hit that in the center of the face, a little bit high, so it had very low spin. The driver, you wanna hit high with low spin. You do that by increasing your attack angle. We don't wanna hit down with the driver, we want to hit up. We overcomplicate this driver a lot because it's a little bit different. And I explained this in driver 101. It's a little bit different than an iron swing. Iron swing, you kind of can get away with being stacked on top of the ball. You want to hit down with an iron. A driver, it's a longer club. You swing it harder. It's a bigger head. It's more forgiving. Always a good lie when it's teed up, right? So that allows us to swing a little bit deeper, swing a little bit harder. But if we approach the driver the same way as an iron, we're going to run into some problems and we're going to not be able to hit it as consistently as we want to. So in its simplest form, the driver, if we just start in first gear here and let's pivot the club, hit the ball on the inside, I was happy with that as well. Now I can go to second gear. All right, and you may be thinking to yourself, this is too easy. Well, that's the point, okay? This is sustainable and this is a pathway to getting better. We get some consistency in first gear, now we go to second gear, okay? This is second gear, I like to think of hands and arms, okay? We're just extending the swing arc a little bit. So those are carrying 10, 20 yards, just little chips with the driver. Now we'll look to carry these 40 or 50 yards. So let's just extend the swing arc a little bit. We have hands and some arms here, same objective. All right, now that was okay for me. That was a little bit on the heel. So what I would do is I would stay there and I would look to get a little more consistency. You can use shoe spray. Make sure you're hitting the middle of the face, all right? So there's second gear. All right, so what did I do? I just, it was the same approach. I'm just extending the swing arc and I'm really exaggerating that inside path because I'm wanting to sweep a draw. One of my faults and a lot of you watching, and the reason I made a course like steep to shallow is most of the people that I play golf with, amateurs, 
are going to try to hit it long. They're going to jump on top of it right from the beginning. They're going to get it really steep in their downswing. So on this, I'm really over exaggerating, letting the hands drop and attacking the golf ball from the inside. Okay. Now, third gear, what I'm going to add in is the little sensation of pressure change. Here's where I really like to let the, the stance kind of stagger. All right, that's going to get my hip out of the way. And this is one of the best tips I've ever got from Mike Malaska is dropping this back foot. It's going to get me onto my lead side a little bit earlier in transition. And it's just a great way to warm up, rehearse and practice the drive. It's also going to help me stay in my posture longer and make sure I swing around. So I'm going to use hands and arms, and then I'm just going to let my pressure change load into my trail side a little bit, and then get into my lead side on the downswing. All right, that was also on the heel a little bit. I hit that way more on the heel than I would want to. So again, I would hang out there. Now what I'm not gonna do, I will for this video, because I wanna keep this short, is I'm not just gonna go, okay, first, second, third, fourth, and then start making swings as hard as I can. I wanna have some ownership in third gear, in second gear, before I progress up to fourth gear, fifth gear. All right, so now if I go to fourth gear, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna push the hip back a little bit. So now we're starting to talk about ground forces a little bit. All right, maybe now I finally put on the glove. That carried 150 yards or so. All right, now these will start carrying 200 yards, 220 yards. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I have the hands, I have the arms, I have some pressure change, and I'm actually gonna to try to get a little more loading by pushing this hip back, still with a staggered stance, get into my lead side early, and then push away from the golf ball. For more explanation on that, loading in the lower body, we have a free course available on my website called Load to Launch. I definitely suggest you check that out. Okay, so fourth gear, look to carry this about 200 yards, kind of keep the same pattern. All right, not bad, definitely overcooked it. So if you overcook that, if you overdraw it, I'm gonna try to turn a little bit harder through impact, but that's the pattern that I want. Hit the middle of the face, push the hip back, push my lead hip back. Now what do I do in fifth gear, all right? If you're driving a car and you get into fifth gear, you hit fifth gear at about, I don't know, I'm not a car guy, 50, 60 miles an hour. And then you can take that up to, 120 or 200 miles an hour, depending on what type of car you're driving. So fifth gear is approaching kind of full swing land, if you will. Okay, so on fifth gear, I'm just combining all those elements. Again, hopefully we have some ownership over first, second, third, fourth gear. Now fifth gear, I'm kind of keeping these same principles in mind. My stance might still be a little staggered. I like to play with a little bit of a closed stance. All right, but now we're just maybe leveraging the ground a little bit harder picking up some velocity. But here again, in fifth gear, if we carry that 250 some yards, we're not gonna go straight to a 330 carry. And a lot of you are saying, well, of course, but I see so many people go to warm up and they may start with a wedge, but that wedge is full hack right from the very beginning. They're really opening themselves up to a chance of injury. So slowly progress, and that goes for weight training and whatever you're doing. Okay, so now as we approach full swing land, try to keep all those principles in mind. Eh, close, drawing a little bit too much, but that's the shape that I'm wanting to see. A nice big draw because my tendency is gonna get on top of it too much. Most of you, that's the same. Now I'm also gonna intensify that draw because I've got this stance really closed off. I can start to bring a little bit back more towards the center as I warm up. That's flying 270. I wanna continue now to just stretch that out. Continue to see that draw pattern here at 270 and then 290 and then 320, 340, 380. That's the idea. All right. I expect that from you at home as well. Okay. But those are kind of the steps that help me iron things out. If you have your marker in front of you, okay, you can start to work as well. You can start to work fades. You can start to work draws. All right. So I've been hitting all draws. Let's see if I can see same principles, but work a fade. I would go through the same process, first, second, third, fourth gear. Let's say we'll go to, uh, well, let's be about third gear here. See if we can hit a little fade. Oh, it tried. Didn't quite get it there, a little bit on the heel. 
But for a fade, I want to start it left, move it right. For the draw, I want to start it right, move it left. This is how you develop your hand-eye coordination. This is how you start to work the golf ball both ways and iron your swing path out, okay? This is a great way to go about it. This is the way you practice the driver. Most of the people who I, I work with want to come in and start swinging the driver full speed right away. But unless you can do something 15, 10, 35 miles an hour, I don't expect you to be able to do it 130 miles an hour. So one of the most helpful things I can do in trying to swing a club with some consistency, 150 miles an hour, is slow it down to first gear, especially when I get frustrated and a little bit of a funk, to kind of reassert, okay, what am I trying to do here with my sequencing, delivering the club, et cetera. This has helped me a lot, and I think it'll help you as well. Be patient, work from first up to fifth gear. Those are your five steps to help you to start to own the driver, hit it longer, hit it straighter.